If they lift that restriction from the Constitution, they'd be able to do as they please. Uh, and clearly EU membership, European Union membership, is another thing that uh, uh, clearly some people in Ukraine and, and certainly many people within the political establishment would like to see. Hamish, nearly 2,600 people have been killed in the fighting in eastern Ukraine, and that is not including the 298 civilians of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 that was shot down there. Can you give us some idea of just how intense the fighting has been in eastern Ukraine? Well, there's no doubt it's been intense in the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, as you mentioned, there has been many uh, people killed uh, throughout the duration of this conflict. Uh, today, what we've seen is continued fighting, edging. It seems a little bit closer to the strategically important town of Mariupol, which is uh, on the edges of the sea. Uh, it's in this strip of land that is being discussed as a possible land corridor stretching from Russia proper into Crimea, which it was annexed earlier this year. Uh, yesterday, it was uh, confirmed, at least by the Ukrainians, uh, that Novo Zavorsk uh, had fallen uh, to the pro-Russian separatists. Uh, but clearly in the mix, uh, in this ge small geographical area, is some 1,000 Russian troops. That's according to NATO. Worth noting, however, that the Kremlin is denying that there are any Russian soldiers uh, on Ukrainian soil. And Hamish, here's the big question, what's concerning a lot of people right now. With the latest aggression from Russia, what then is the likelihood of an all-out war between Russia and Ukraine? Well, I think that probably remains fairly unlikely. That said, uh, we've been here many times this year. Uh, and certainly as, uh, as early as January and February, we were talking about this question of a possible Russian invasion. At that point in time, it seemed absolutely uh, impossible uh, that Putin would take steps towards that. Yet here we are uh, in late August, uh, and the Ukrainian leadership is saying that they are being invaded by Russia already. There's conjecture about that because, as I say, the Kremlin denies that there are, in fact, any Russian troops uh, on the ground in Ukraine. But there is plenty of evidence. Na NATO satellite imagery shows heavy artillery from Russia being moved uh, inside Ukrainian territory. As well as that, there's been these 10 uh, U uh, Russian paratroopers captured uh, earlier this week uh, that initially Russia denied were here and had been captured and then said had simply wandered off their path and ended up in Ukraine by mistake. There's also lots of evidence uh, of heavy weaponry and artillery uh, and uh, machinery on the ground from Russia inside Ukraine in the areas that are being fought over. Uh, so it's difficult to deny uh, that there is a conflict going on, at least in some way supported by Russia. Whether or not that means a full-scale ground assault uh, by the Russian military is another matter altogether. But certainly the Ukrainian leadership, the president, the prime minister, all of the diplomats are saying this is an invasion. Uh, we are currently confronting the Russian military and we need support from the international community. So, Hamish, what is Russia's end goal here? Can you explain why it is so important for Russia to have control or influence in Ukraine? Well, it's not clearly stated. Uh, from the Russian point of view, what they say is that there is a huge uh, population inside Ukraine who have uh, allegiance to Russia. They speak Russian rather than Ukrainian. They are ethnically uh, Russian and need protection. Uh, since the revolution that occurred here earlier this year, uh, we saw the ousting of the president, a new government put in place. Uh, there is a sense amongst that pro-Russian community that they're under threat. And certainly there are fighters, pro-Russian separatists, who are very active in eastern Ukraine. And there is a fairly clear division between eastern and western Ukraine. The president who was ousted, who was pro-Russian, uh, had a lot of his support uh, in the east of the country. A lot of the uh, protest, a lot of the uprising against his leadership came from the west of the country, including the capital, Kiev, uh, from people that want closer ties with Europe. So that's the crux of the situation that we've found ourselves in this year in Ukraine. But in terms of what it seems Russia is trying to pursue right now,